We're going to find confidence intervals for proportions using our calculators and a handy little technique called the plus four rule. First thing we're going to look at doing is making sure that we have all our conditions met to be able to do a confidence interval on our calculator. First one that we're looking through is having the right type of sampling method. Now the SRS is kind of the gold standard magic ticket to having a good sampling method. You've got to have an SRS. You could, however, use a systematic sample or a uh, properly balanced stratified random sample and both of those are going to get you the same basic effect. So SRS or something equivalently good. And you have to make sure, of course, you have low under coverage and low non-response because that's going to ruin any survey. So it has to be a good survey is the most important step to uh, continuing on with the rest of the confidence interval. So we got our SRS down. Next thing we need to do is make sure that we're meeting some things so that our assumption of having a binomial distribution that looks like a normal curve is not broken. Now in order to make it look like a normal curve, here are the things we need to have. We need to have at least 10 successes. So we need to have at least 10 people that said yes, for example. Now if you don't know how many successes you have, but you do know N and P, you just multiply them together. Because if you have a 10% chance of success and you have 10 people, multiply them together, you would get one success. And that makes sense. So, so the simple rule is having 10 successes, otherwise this formula can come into play. You also need 10 failures. You also need 10 people that said no to your survey. Now, same idea, n number of people times 1 minus p, or the probability of failure um, has to be at least 10. So basically, you need 10 failures. And then finally, your population needs to be at least 10 times the sample size. This is uh, an assumption that we tend to break when we're doing simulations in class, where we might take a sample of eight people from a classroom of 24, we're severely breaking that assumption because our population is far too small for the size of our sample. So in general, it's always safe uh, when you have a much larger population than what you're sampling. So we've got our SRS, or our sampling method, all figured out. We've got these 10 successes, 10 failures, and a large enough population. Last thing we need to do is use something called the plus four rule. Now, I like to call this statistical magic because there's really almost no logical reason why we should be making up data to make our uh, confidence interval more accurate. However, it works, so we're gonna use it. The way it works is we add two successes and two failures to our data. Whatever data we get, we're gonna add two successes and two failures. Now, in uh, the way we're typing into our calculator, we really are going to be adding two successes and four total. Um, we call it the plus four rule because we're adding four total data points, two successes, two failures. And we'll take a look at how that works when we actually do some examples. So let's say you took an SRS of the community and found that 11 of the 43 people you surveyed uh, liked ketchup with their turkey. Interesting premise. Give a 95% confidence interval of the proportion of people in the entire community that like ketchup with their turkey. So we have data from an SRS, but we want to see if it holds true for the entire community. Now, first thing, it says, do we have an SRS? Well, we just read that, so yep, we have that condition met. We're good to go. Moving on. Do we have at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures? We have, it says, 11 of 43. So 11, that would be more than 10. And 11 out of 43, that leaves like 32 or so failures. Plenty of failures. So plenty of, just enough successes, plenty of failures to go around. So we have those two conditions met. And it says 10 times the population. Our sample is only, uh, is only a tenth of the population. Says it's a survey of the community, and they only talk to 43 people. So unless it's a very, very tiny community, we should be okay with this assumption too. Next thing we need to check is what our value of x is. Now x is our number of successes. 
So number of successes, number of times that people answered yes, the thing that you're looking for, in this case, is going to be 11. So our x value is going to be 11. Put that in right there. Our total, uh, we don't need to count the number of failures, we just need to count the total, uh, and the calculator will take care of figuring out failures for us, is going to be 43. So let's go ahead and mark that. And we've got, and we call that n because it's our sample size. So x is our number of successes, n is our total sample size. And these correspond with what we've seen when we did stuff with binomial distribution. Now we're going to do our plus 4 rule. So to do the plus 4 rule, we make up two successes and add it on to get a total of 13. And we add four uh, total data points, the two successes and two failures, to our sample size to end up with 47. So now we have 13 successes and 47 total. The fun part now is using the calculator to find the confidence interval. because It's actually quite easy to do. You push the stat key, you go over to tests, and then I would recommend uh, going up through the bottom um, so you don't get confused with the test and you make sure you hit the interval. And you're looking for one prop z int. Don't get confused by one prop z test, which is different. So one prop z int. It has an X, an N, and a C level. So X is just the number of successes, and we always remember to add our 2, so we got that here. N is our sample size. We added our 4, so we now are up to 47. And our C level, that is our confidence level. It says give a 95% confidence interval of the proportion of people in the community. So to make a 95% confidence level, we would type in a C level of 0.95. We do it as a decimal. Then we go down to calculate, and there's our answer. So right there, I'll drag that in. This is our interval. And if we were to interpret this right now, um, we'll get more into the interpretation part later. But the quick of it is that if you shift this decimal over a couple, these are both percentages. So between 14.87 uh, percent and 40.45 uh, percent of the population, we are 95 percent confident that that between these two values, these two percentages of the population is where the true value, um, the true parameter lies. Look at another example. You surveyed your friends to see what proportion of the school thinks seniors are awesome. Of 24 people you talked to, 21 said yes. Give a 95% confidence interval of the proportion of people in the school who think seniors are awesome. First of all, is an SRS. Absolutely not. This is a convenient sample beyond convenient samples. And it is horribly unreliable data. So we really shouldn't even consider proceeding from here. But just, just to check, let's look at some of our other assumptions and see if anything else is off there too. 10 successes. Well, we have 21, so that's good. 10 failures. We only asked 24 people and 21 said yes. That would leave us with 3 failures. So that is nowhere close to 10. So that's another fail and then a large enough population. I think we're okay with that because uh, we're trying to learn about the entire school of five to six hundred and we only talked to 24. But anyways, we have enough conditions failed already. Even one condition failed is enough to stop, um, but two major ones both being violated are a huge problem. So we're actually just going to move on from this problem. Next one, a local government conducted a survey, properly weighted stratified random sample, and found that 233 people out of 393 oppose a new referendum. To determine whether it is worth pursue, further pursuing the issue, find a 99% confidence interval. Is there a chance that less than half of the population opposes a referendum? Okay, well, let's check our assumptions right away. Is this an SRS? No, but is it the equivalent? It is a stratified random sample, and they said that it was weighted correctly. So we'll actually say, yeah, no, that's going to pass the test. It is a representative sample. Next thing, are there 10 successes? 233. I think there's plenty. 
10 failures. 233 out of 393. Looks like there's almost 100 and something failures, so that should be plenty. And then do we have a large enough sample versus the population? We have a sample of almost 400 people, and it's conducted by a local government. So unless we have a town of under 4,000, which is possible, uh, it seems like we should probably be okay there. So again, not 100% sure on that one, but it seems like things are okay. So let's continue to move on. We have an X of 233, and just to look at where I got that, it said 233 people out of that number oppose a new referendum. So we have our number of successes down here. We have our total, our sample size, number of people asked, is 393, and we call that N. So we've got that there. And then we have to apply the plus 4 rule. So the plus 4 rule says we add two successes, you get 235. We add 4 to the total, so you get 397. Now we have to punch all of this in our calculator. So we take out our calculators, and we go to stat, we go to test, and I recommend going up from the bottom and until we get to one prop z int. That stands for one proportion z interval using the z normal curve. So number of successes, x is going to be a much larger number this time, 235. n is going to be 297. Our c level, it says 99% confidence. So we have 99% or 0.99 right here. And then we go to calculate. Let's look at this data now. We have the one prop z int, this number to this number, p something, that's actually p hat, it's a little hard to read, uh, is this number here, and then it tells us our n, our sample size. So let's try to interpret this now. We see this first number uh, is the first number in our interval, and if we turn that into a percent, it's going to be about 52.8%. And that's going to range from there to the second number here, which is about 65.5%. So now we have our range. That's our, our percentages. The population proportion falls somewhere in here. We're 99% confident of that. So now the original question says, is there a chance that less than half the population opposes the referendum? Well, it's not in our interval here, so I'm thinking not so much. But we have to remember, what is this interval here? This is where 99% of the data is expected to fall. So there is some chance, 1% chance, that it is not in this range. So there's some very small chance that it could be less than 50%. It's probably like maybe 0.2% chance that that could happen. But it is possible. So what we would say is something like this. It's very unlikely that less than half the population opposes the referendum. And we could give specific numbers like less than 1%, or if we did farther calculations, maybe even more specific than that. Um, but this is really what it's getting at to answer the question. And that's it.